Hello everyone, welcome to Body Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77. And uh, yeah, we're doing a label this week. I'm sure you guys already know, for those of you who've been watching the videos. Uh, we're doing Shameless. And uh, the one that I'm reviewing today is a 1971 Giallo directed by Sergio Martino. Of course, you remember him from you know movies like Torso and things. Um, I'm reviewing The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. And uh, yeah, one thing I will say that I do like about uh, Shameless is that they do come with reversible covers. And I'm kind of glad about that because honestly, if I use... This is the reversible cover that was on the inside. If I use the, the one that faces you when you first buy the product, I wouldn't have been able to show that. There was some, some female naughty bits on there I wouldn't have been able to show. But uh, anyway... <clears throat> First of all, we're going to review the movie, and then we're going to uh, talk about, you know, Shameless as a label. Uh, the movie stars Ed Weech Fennick as uh, Mrs. Julie Ward. She's married to a, uh, to a, a like a diplomat, um, like an ambassador, and uh, she comes to, I guess it's Italy? Um, the movie is an Italian-Spanish co-production. Or was it Vienna? I'm trying to remember. Sorry. I just watched the movie and, oh Christ, I can't even remember where they were at. Anyway, so she uh, she goes and it turns out that she's pretty much a very neglected housewife. And she's on her way to her hotel. And then she has memories of uh, her former lover, Jean, played by Ivan Rasimov, who you will remember from movies like Jungle Holocaust, uh, Eaten Alive, um, what else was there? Oh, Man from Deep River. Movies like that. And uh, so it turns out that uh, she was in a relationship with him and he was quite abusive to her. Uh, he would hit her. He would strike her. He would, you know, uh, force himself on her things like this. And it turned out that the whole reason she ended, pretty much the whole reason that she ended up marrying her husband was basically was just to get away from Jean. You know, she was just tired of being in this abusive relationship with him and she just wanted to get away from him, which is one of the reasons she married her husband. But she's very unfulfilled in her marriage and uh, her her and her husband, they don't spend much time together. And uh, she uh, meets up with her friend Carol and her friend Carol uh, introduces her to her, her cousin, George, played by uh, George Hilton. I was getting ready to say George Hamilton. I'm glad I didn't do that. And George is a very suave, kind of a playboy type and, um, you know, very confident, very cocky and sure of himself and sure that he can get any woman that he wants. And, and he sets his sights on Julie and, and he seduces her and ultimately they end up getting into a relationship. Well, there is a snag. OK, well, a couple of snags. OK, number one is the fact that, uh, you know, Julie, she's in this. Uh, she's in this relationship with George, but at the same time, she's still married. And plus, Jean has not forgotten about her, and he starts he's stalking her. He's sending her flowers with notes and basically telling her that, that uh, she belongs to him. She will never get away from him. He will keep coming after her no matter what. Um, you know, he's going to get her when she least suspects it, things like this. And, uh, excuse me. And uh, also, too, while this is going on, there is the Black Glove Killer, you know, that we are familiar with, with Giallos. You know, if you watch your share of Giallos, you know there's always the Black Glove Killer. And uh, <clears throat> at the very beginning of the movie, um, he picks up a, a prostitute, takes her out into the middle of nowhere, and then when she starts to strip, he pulls out his straight razor. That's the weapon of choice in this movie, is the straight razor. And uh, he... Cuts the poor girl to death and leaves her body bleeding on the side of the road. And uh, so um, there is one part in this movie, and I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, you could say it's an homage to Psycho, but as you can see here, there's a woman in the shower, and the Black Glove Killer is coming up. And there is a scene in this movie, you could say it's an homage to Psycho, but at the same time, it's kind of like, is it an homage or is it just a straight up ripoff because there is a murder shower? scene in this movie very similar to Psycho, almost shot in the same way as Psycho, just with far more nudity and far more blood. Um, this movie isn't overly gory. 
I'm going to be honest with you, uh, it's got some blood in it. But uh, I would say, yeah, if you want a Sergio Martino movie with a lot of blood and gore, Torso would probably be a much better bet than this movie. Um, there is some blood, just not a whole lot of it. It's not a particularly bloody film. But um, anyway, so going back to uh, what we were talking about. So now uh, Jean, he is stalking uh, Julie. And um, there are parts in this movie, I hate to say it, but there are parts in this movie, to me anyway, are very unintentionally funny. Um, at one point, she gets a uh, she gets a phone call. Julie, she gets a phone call from the Black Glove Killer, and uh, you know he's telling her like, "I know what's going on. I know that you're having an affair with a man, and if you don't want your husband to find out, you're going to meet me at this location at sunset, and you know you're going to bring. I believe it was like twenty thousand shillings." And so she goes to her friend Carol and she's like, I don't know what to do and all this other kind of stuff. I'm thinking of paying them off just to, you know, she's all like, um, eventually, yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with my husband and Neil and I want to leave him eventually and stuff. But I just I don't want him to find out this way and everything. And so uh, Carol decides she's going to take it upon herself. She's like, well, I'll go meet this guy and I'll give him the money. And, and you know, and, and she, Carol is very much convinced that uh, it's Jean, and then, uh, so, uh, you know, but Julie's like, well, what if it isn't Jean? You know, she's, well, Carol's all like, oh, I'm going to be happy to meet Jean finally after all I've heard about him, you know, I'm going to tell him to F off and <clears throat> everything else. And Julie's like, well, what if it isn't Jean? And she's all like, I don't know. It's like, well, what if it's the Black Glove Killer and he tries to kill you? I don't know. If it happens, it happens. You know, just it's kind of like some of the motivation in this movie does make a hell of a lot of sense. And uh, Edwidge Fennick, she's stunningly gorgeous. I mean, oh my god, you'll you probably remember her from such classics as Hostel Part Two and uh, um, Strip Nude for Your Killer. You know, movies like that. But um, oh my god, she's stunning and uh, a great actress, talented. But just, unfortunately, you're going to find out this maybe not really given the best written female character in the world. Um, she's the kind of character, she does a lot of things she really shouldn't be doing. You know, um, at one point, there's there's a scene where she's being chased. You know, she, she, get, she pulls into an underground garage, and she's heading towards the elevator. And when she opens the elevator, you know, the Black Glove Killer, you know, very, very reminiscent of um, Dress to Kill. I kind of wonder maybe if even De Palma might have had a little bit of influence by um, for Dress to Kill by this movie. But uh, he comes, you know, the, the killer comes out swinging the razor at her and stuff. And uh, she manages to get back to her car. And then um, so she gets into her car. The keys are in the ignition. So any of us watching this movie, we would be sitting there like, well, shit, girl, you're in the car. You'll start the car. Get the hell out of there. Go to the police. All this kind of stuff. She starts the car, pulls the car up to the door, gets out and just runs in the door. And then, you know, she's running, you know, she gets in the elevator and stuff. And, um, you know, she gets to her apartment and everything else. And her husband is there and, and he's just, you know, instead of um, instead of uh, just calling the police and letting them handle it, you know, it's like, hey, the killer, you know, the black glove killer's here. You know, send every available man you got. You know, you have a chance to get this guy to nail him and stuff. They're all like. Well, we know it's John, so let's go and, you know, Ivan Rasimov's character. We know it's him, so let's go and everything. Of course, it turns out that, you know, um, John ends up being the biggest red herring you could possibly imagine. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but that's kind of the thing about this movie. There are, this movie does have twists and turns, and some of the twists you'll never see coming, but some of the twists you'll see coming like 10 miles away. But, um, you know, and I don't want to give away too much more, but... Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, so, um, hmm, yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, I'm about ready to close off. Of but anyway, we're, we're closing in on finding who the killer is. But at the same time, Julie, she decides she can't take anymore. She wants to run away with George. And, um, you know, uh, they run away, I believe it's to Spain. And, uh, you know, we get towards the climax. And that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. Because like I said, there's a lot of twists and turns. I don't want to give it away. So uh, overall, a fun movie. Um, maybe not Maybe not going to be on your top ten of the best giallos in the world. But certainly a fun movie. 
But uh, like I said, Edwidge Fennec, her her uh, character's not really the best female written character. She's the kind like um, she lets herself get manhandled by men a lot. Um, she doesn't really stand up for herself very much. Um, uh, let's see, she you know doesn't do the smartest things in the world. Um, she's the kind as soon as trouble you know as soon as trouble shows up, she faints dead away. Things like that. So yeah, not the most positive female written character in the world, but uh, I would definitely say yeah if you're a fan of Giallos and things like that, yeah definitely give this one a shot. Um, like I said, I think for I don't know, I'm sure there are some people out there who absolutely adore this movie. I would say for me personally, um, out of the Giallos I've seen, it's kind of middle of the road. It's not the best thing I've ever seen, but it's not definitely the worst either. Um, but you know when you compare this to other Giallos like you know. Um, you know, like uh, Deep Red or Bird with the Crystal Plumage or things like that, you know, um, the work of Argento or Lindsay or, 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 uh, or uh, Fulci and things like that. Yeah, it's, you know, this is going to be just kind of okay. Not the best, but not the worst either. But yeah, I would definitely say give this a shot, especially, you know, um, like I said, not the most bloody um, um, giallo in the world. But hey, if you like, you know, if you love your movies with gorgeous, naked um, Italian women, this movie's definitely got you covered on that score. So plenty of beautiful, lovely ladies to look at. So you got that going for So yeah, I would definitely say give this a shot. All right, so now we talked about the movie. <coughs> Sorry. Let's talk about Shameless as a brand. And I'm probably going to be the jerk in the whole group. I'm not really big on Shameless, to be honest with you. Um... They got a couple of titles that I wish I had, you know, like uh, Della Morte, Della More, uh is that the right way to say it? You know, Cemetery Man. Um, they got, you know, movies like that that I wish I had, but uh, honestly, from what I've seen for the most part, is a lot of the the uh, the releases that Shameless does, it seems like you can find much better um, releases on other labels. Like this one here, personally... Um, I was lucky in the sense that this one turned out to be region free, but that's a problem with Shameless as a label is a lot of their movies are not region free. A lot of them are region locked, um, but uh, it does have a you know it does have some special features on it, which you know Rob I believe mentioned earlier that you know a lot of them don't because it's meant to be. I get that you know I get that it's more like a <clears throat> it's more meant to be kind of like almost akin to like watching a VHS. You know, you get your, you get a few, uh, you get a few previews, then you start your movie. I get that. And this one here has uh, English and optional Italian audio with English subtitles. You have a Sergio Martino and Edwidge Fennec interview, um, Sergio Martino introduction, uh, second interview with director Sergio Martino. You have a fact track by Justin Harris and Edwidge Fennec uh, bio presentation. So you get, you get a couple of bonus features on here, but you know, uh, that's kind of the thing. You're taking a gamble on this. You know, when I ordered this, it did say um, that it was region free. But, you know, I, it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to other guys as well. You know, when we order something and it says region free, but then you get it and you come to find out it's not region free. It's region locked. So, you know, that is kind of a thing. You're taking a gamble on this. And uh, for what you're paying for this, honestly, like for this movie, for example, uh, Severin just put out an edition of this, and truth be told, um, I really would have much rather have gotten the Severin version than this version, because that one has more bonus features. Uh, let's see what the uh, Severin has going for it. Okay, so on the Severin, uh, it has a brand new 4K transfer, which, you know, the transfer on this looks pretty good. It's, you know, it looks decent. It's definitely watchable, and it looked good on my 4K TV, but... I'm sure that probably if they did a new 4K uh, scan for the movie, it probably looks much better on the, um, you know, on the uh, uh, Severn version. But also include in limited number, you get a CD soundtrack by Nora Orlandi. Um, you have uh, uh, a Vice and Virtue interview with Sergio Martino. You have Cold as Ice interview with uh, writer or Ernesto Gastaldi. Sorry. Um, let's see. You have Vienna Vice interview with actor George Hilton and genre historian Antonio Bruschini. 
You have an archive interview with Ed Weech Fennick. You have commentary by uh, Kat Ellinger, the author of All Colors of Sergio Martino. So, I mean, you do get some bonus features on here and stuff, but uh, it seems like, um, for me personally, I would have much, you know, for the money that I paid for this, I would have much rather have just gotten the uh, Severn edition because the Severn seems like it has more going for it. Um, this is not a bad edition, but honestly, I would just say, like, the only real reason I could see a film collector picking up this movie or this version of it is mainly just if like you were very very much in love with this movie and you just wanted to get like every available um edition of it that you could but you know for all intents and purposes like i'm sitting here with this and i'm just kind of like i really really wish i had just gotten the um gotten the severn version i think i would have been a lot happier but that's just me but uh, anyway, so that's, yeah, I think that's pretty much going to do it. So I would definitely say, yeah, check out The Vice of Mrs. Ward. It's a fun giallo. Um, got some fun twists and turns. But um, personally, like, as far as Shameless goes, I would definitely say, you know, I would much rather have just gone with the um, the Severin version. That's just me. But anyway, so I think that's uh, pretty much going to do it. So if anybody took the time to watch this, I thank you for doing it. I appreciate you for doing it. I honestly hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a like. If you haven't, go ahead and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. Uh, we have a different video, one for every day of the week. I'm the Friday Reviewer, and uh, everybody's doing really good stuff. And, uh, yeah, so that's it. So, everybody, take care. Have a good night, and uh, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.